I spent just over two weeks travelling through northern India with True Travels. The tour started in Delhi where we got on an overnight train to Udaipur and then travelled on to Pushkar. Our next stops were Jaipur, Ranthambore and then Agra to see the famous Taj Mahal. We then travelled back round to Delhi to end the tour where me and a couple of people I met on the tour had a few extra days alone to explore ourselves. This is the last episode in this India series and India without a tour guide is a completely different experience with some frustrations and an unexpected end to my time in India. We thought we'd come to the Lotus Temple, but I think we've made a grave mistake. It's so, so busy. We just had to walk about 10 minutes. Well, it's maybe been dramatic, but we had to walk so far to get to the end of the queue and everyone's just like selling stuff. We thought maybe there was an event going on. It's not like this at the Taj. I don't know. What's going on? The other girls in the group came to the Lotus Temple before the tour started. None of them mentioned well, like that the queue is like this. Where we just walk, waltz in. I thought we'd walk in as well. I thought we'd pull up at the gates and I thought we would just walk in. But no. What an experience. It's very busy. Busier than I thought it was going to be. But it's pretty. There's like botanic gardens around it. And it looks massive. I thought it was going to be quite smaller. But after seeing the Glasgow Science Centre and the Sydney Opera House, it's the same. This is purgatory. We weren't intending on going into the temple, but when we tried to head back to the gates, they were locked off and it got super busy suddenly and seemed like the only way out was to follow the crowd. The Lotus Temple was not great, so I wouldn't recommend going on a Sunday, that's my top tip. We got trapped in there for an hour and basically had to go into the Lotus Temple to get out again. I mean, I think we also took a wrong turn, but it took us an hour. And then we took another tuk tuk, and now we are in the Lodi Arts District. There's kids playing cricket. It's so cute. This area feels much more like local, residential. Nobody's coming up to us and asking for pictures, which is nice. But this area is famous for its street art, so. We don't really know where we're going because the guides online were not clear. So we grabbed ourselves a drink. So we grabbed ourselves a drink and we're going to take ourselves on our own little Lodi Arts District walking tour. Just take a walk around oh, over there. and see what we can find. The walls are pretty cool. Maybe we could get some, some Instagrams because Luke's never heard of the word Instagrammable. So we'll teach him. Sorry. The man just getting his order in. Thanks, Phoebe. This is all Phoebe's recommendations. She's coming for Suri's job now that we've left the tour and he's not our tour leader. Oh, yeah, there's a wedding nearby, so all the wedding horses are out. I love how the Instagram, the reality. <laughs> We spent an hour or so walking around this area looking at the murals before we ordered a tuk tuk and Uber to go and check out the Akshadam temple. We didn't realise until we got there but it said it was open until half six and we'd arrived just before so we ran inside only to find massive queues. We've arrived at this temple. Other members will wait outside. Cloakroom form must be filled before depositing the luggage. You have to give all your belongings into a little cloakroom which made us a bit nervous and security is really tight. It took us about an hour to actually get in and we thought there was a water show at 7.45 but inside it said water show at 8.30 so we were really confused about the timings and we'd have to wait even longer for that. Phoebe hadn't brought anything to cover her shoulders so we actually ended up leaving but it took us another hour to leave as all the Ubers kept cancelling on us and we still have no idea why. If that wasn't stressful enough, the next day was the worst travel day I have ever had. It is my last day in India today. I'm flying home tonight and this morning Phoebe, Luke and I went out to see this temple which Suri had recommended that you walk in through the mouth and it did look really cool. However, it was a bit of a nightmare to get to because we had to cross the big road and then when we got there it was covered in scaffolding and construction. It didn't really look like the Google image photos which was quite funny but it was still quite cool to walk in through the mouth and inside it was really weird but also not weird because it's a temple but just not like anything else I'd ever seen before it was pretty cool but then at the end they were just sitting with little bits of money in front of them and we didn't know what that was for and then the man sort of made like this motion at us so we left and before you go in you have to take off your shoes and there's a little boy at the front wanting money for taking your shoes 
and he had in a hundred, but we weren't gonna give him a hundred because that's ridiculous just for taking your shoes for five minutes. So we gave him 40 and then we walked to the 24 seven, which is like the 7-Eleven here in India. And I've got a little bag for the airport for my dinner tonight. But then we went to McDonald's, which we had for dinner last night as well, which is pretty cool. And it was nice seeing all the different stuff that they have. And obviously most of their stuff is veggie, which was really cool for me. I really enjoyed both of my meals that I had at McDonald's and it's super, super cheap here. They've got a value menu with like five burgers on it. That's like one pounds for each of them in meals. But when I was in the McDonald's, I noticed that my Instagram and my maps weren't loading. But I kind of knew my way back from the McDonald's to my hotel. So I said goodbye to Phoebe and Luke because they were flying a bit earlier than me. They've got eight hours in Dubai. And I've come back to the hotel and I thought that my internet would get fixed once I get back onto the Wi-Fi at the hotel. So I went downstairs to talk to the reception and I was like, my Wi-Fi is not working, nothing's loading. And they said, oh, we're on the Wi-Fi and they showed me. And then I knew that something was a bit off anyway because it wasn't working when I was outside of the McDonald's. And why would the data not be working? But then why is the Wi-Fi not working either? It's really weird and I don't know what's going on. So my flight is not until three o'clock tomorrow morning. So I was gonna leave to go to the airport about 10, 11, so that I had enough time to go to the airport. But I am in this room until 5 p.m. because I'm on a half day. And I was just gonna either wait for a couple hours at the hotel and then book an Uber. But now I'm just feeling a little bit stressed and I just wanna to get to the airport because I also can't check in. I've not checked in yet. I don't have any internet. I can't do anything. I can't book my Uber. So I've just asked the hotel to book me a taxi which is like double the price that it would have been if I'd booked it on Uber and also I had to pay for the hotel with cash which Suri told me I would be able to pay for the hotel with card so I didn't have enough cash for the hotel and the taxi so I had to go to the ATM but the man was really helpful the security guard came and walked me to the ATM because I don't have any internet I just feel a bit nervous because I don't like telling people that I don't have internet because it makes me feel more unsafe because then if someone wanted to take advantage of me, they would know that I would have no way of contacting anyone. And even on that taxi ride, I've not been able to text my mum that I don't have any internet and I won't be able to talk to her for 24 hours if this continues. And I know it'll be fine, I'll get to the airport, I'll just sit there for six hours or something, but then at least I'll be at the airport, I can check in. I can know if anything is delayed. That's another thing, I don't know if there's any changes to my flight whilst I'm sat here. So I'm just gonna go to the airport in an hour get there like six, eight hours early, ridiculously early, but then I know that I'm at the airport and I can make myself feel a little bit better. I know that everything's gonna be fine. It could be a lot worse. I've got my passport, I've got my money. I love India, but I don't think I could have done it myself. I'm fine and I know I, I will be fine. It's just, I also can't let other people know that I'm fine. And I know this bit is really trivial, but the TV on British Airways was shit. And I can't even, I don't know why, what's wrong with my phone. I have stuff downloaded to watch and even the downloaded stuff just buffers. It's really weird and now I can't wait to get home and tell people that I'm home and I'm fine and have access to the internet and talk to people. So it's now 2 p.m. I've asked them to book me the taxi for three and then I literally have 12 hours from the time that I leave the hotel to my flight. But like I said, I'd feel much better just waiting in the airport where I can know any updates and ask people about my flight because like I said, I'll also have to queue for check-in and my boarding pass. I don't have a boarding pass, so I don't have any bags to check in, but there's nowhere for me to check in because I don't have internet. I've had such a good time in India, but like I said, I am so thankful that I went with True Travels and with Suri. It's been the best trip ever, the best time ever. And we've all said in the group that we'll be back. So these are just my raw feelings leaving India. It's just frustrating. And if I had internet, it would be so much better. But I just feel like India can get in your face and then when there's this one thing on top, it can be a bit much. So I will be fine. I know I'm fine. I'm not panicking. It's just a bit annoying. So now I've got to pack my bag and at least I've got a book. I'm so glad I've got a book because if I don't have anything to do on my phone for 12 hours, I think I'll finish my book. I am at the airport. This is probably the worst travel day of my life. I mean, nothing terrible has happened, it's just so annoying. I get the hotel staff to book me a taxi, I pay over the odds for that, and then I went to 24-7 showed you my snacks. I've left them at the hotel reception because I went down so that I could ask one of them if I could WhatsApp my mum on their phone, which I did because I knew she'd be freaking out. So I sent my mum a text, sent her my flight details, 
told her that I was heading to the airport now and that the hotel man was letting me use his phone. But then I sat down for about five minutes and I'd come down at quarter two, three, so that I had time to relax to send the messages to my mum, make sure she had time to apply. So I'm sat there, it's quarter to three, and then suddenly they go, oh, the taxi man's here. And I'm a bit flustered. I just think, oh my God, I've got to go. And I must have left my 24-7 bag there. So now... I don't have the snacks, but it's fine, I've still got money at least. I've got in the taxi, it's taken me about half an hour, which is fine, there wasn't much traffic. It's 3.46, I'm at the airport, if you can hear all the noises, I'm sorry, but this is so chaotic. There's just different gates, and I was like, I don't know what gate to go in. Most of it's about domestic departures, and I was like, I'm not domestic. I just asked one of the men, I said, where's the international gate, and then he let me through. So I went up and then I was panicking because it says please get your documents and your boarding pass ready and I don't have my boarding pass because I want to check in. So then I get to the front and I'm like, can I, where's it check in? I don't have a, che- a boarding pass yet. And he's like, let me see your itinerary. And thank God I had screenshotted my British Airways itinerary from before. So I don't have the boarding pass but I've got the times and the terminals. So I showed him that and my flight's at 3.20 in the morning and he says, oh, you're too early. And in the UK, I feel like you can just go into the terminal. I didn't even want to go through security yet. I just wanted to sit down inside the airport, settle myself, and he said, no, you're too early. You can only go into the airport six hours before your flight. So now I need to wait here for another six hours outside the airport until I can go inside the airport. And then I've got another six hours until my flight leaves with no internet and I don't really know what I'm going to do for six hours but like I said before it's not the end of the world I've got my passport I've got money it's just so annoying and all of this could have been prevented if I had had internet to text Suri about what was going on or leave the air leave the hotel later because I would feel more secure about my flight if I could have checked in and checked it online But I couldn't do any of those things. I even connected to the airport Wi-Fi, which is free for four hours. But that doesn't work either. I don't understand what's going on on my phone. I think my data that I bought on the eSIM has run out. But then I don't understand why the Wi-Fi wouldn't be working either. So this is my spot for the next six hours. I finally made it inside the terminal. I'm lucky that I screenshotted the itinerary before, but because it was a screenshot and I didn't know I'd have to be doing this, he wasn't really happy that my name wasn't on the screenshot. Obviously, he can't match it up to my passport, but I went to a different guy and he's just let me in. It's now half nine. I've been here so long and I still have to get on a nine-hour flight. But these things happen. I'm just glad I'm inside. It's half past 12. I'm just passed through security got checked in with my paper boarding pass and she's given me an aisle seat which is very kind because when I tried to check in earlier I was middle that's why I held off checking and how this whole problem came about but I'm glad I've got an aisle seat now so I'm going to walk through duty free try and get myself some water but that took a while so I mean I'm just glad to be doing things instead of just sitting doing nothing so almost there I found my gate and tried not to fall asleep and miss my flight. At this point it's 3am and I've been at the airport for 12 hours so luckily by the time we boarded I slept the whole time. We landed in London and I took the tube back and now I'm home. I hope you have enjoyed my India series. I'm sorry it's taken me so long to get up but I do work a full time job and have other things going on as well. It's crazy to me that this is going up now in July when it was in February. If you have any questions about travelling India leave them in the comments below and I will try to get back to you. As you can tell from this video travelling India alone or without a tour guide or without a local company to guide you around the places and help out, it can get really frustrating. And I feel like India, like I said, just gets in your face. And then when one thing starts to go wrong, it can get really overwhelming. I loved my time in India so much. I loved tour travels. I loved Suri or tour guide. I cannot say enough good things about that. But my last like 24 to 48 hours in India were really, really stressful. And when I got back to London, I turned my phone back on at the airport and it still wasn't loading anything. And I was like, okay, this is weird now. Like I'd turned my eSIM off. I don't know why I don't have any data when I've turned my eSIM off and it's my regular SIM. But then because I was back in the UK, I did have service. So I texted my stepdad and my mum to let them know that I was home and... 
like what the problem might be and my stepdad texted me back asking if I had turned my VPN on and then I was so annoyed at myself. For some reason when my VPN is on on my phone it's fine for the most part but if I leave it on for an extended period of time like maybe two weeks, hint hint, then it starts to really act up and affect the phone. Sometimes things just won't load and it won't connect to things and it hadn't even connected in my head that it could even be the VPN. So as soon as I turned the VPN off on my phone, everything suddenly loaded and I was kicking myself because if I'd known that in India, then my journey back would have been so much less stressful. I wouldn't have had to leave the hotel early. I could have booked myself an Uber. I would have saved money as well, but it's just something that I had to do because there was no way that I was going to be able to find that out. I could couldn't contact anyone, couldn't contact my Indian tour guide, couldn't contact my family, couldn't even like Google what is going on with my phone. I was glad that I'd used the hotel man's uh, reception to text my mum though because she had my flight details so she wasn't that worried about me. That was a really stressful journey back and like I say probably my worst travel day to date but I think you can tell in the video I didn't panic. I'm quite proud of myself. I was frustrated and I was annoyed but I wasn't panicked so if I can get through that I can pretty much get through anything now. So I hope you guys enjoyed my India series and this last video. Give it a thumbs up if you did. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll be back next time with a brand new travel video. Bye guys.